All right, so the latest Ubuntu release is finally here. Ubuntu 2204 LTS is out today, codenamed the Jammy Jellyfish. Don't you just love their code names? Anyway, the fact that this is an LTS or long-term supported release means that there's a lot riding on this version of Ubuntu. And in this video, I'm going to give it a full review. And given that this is a long-term supported release, that means that Canonical, the makers of Ubuntu, will support the desktop version for three years and also the server version for five years. But considering that we're focusing on the desktop version today, then you can actually benefit from three years of support from Canonical, which is pretty cool. And that's certainly a heck of a lot better than the nine months you get from interim releases. LTS releases are understandably a big deal. Now, during the time that I've spent with this release, I came away mostly impressed. The desktop experience is really good, but unfortunately some inconsistencies such as Frankenome, which is one of the things that I'll be talking about later, as well as some odd design choices keep this release from perfection. So what does the Jammy Jellyfish get right and what does it get wrong? Well, let's go ahead and get started with the review and I'll tell you all about it. First of all, let's spend a moment and talk about the installation process. What's changed this time around when it comes to the installer? Well, very little actually. For the most part, the installation process is exactly the same as it's been for countless releases now. Just like before, after you create bootable installation media for Ubuntu, you boot your computer from that media and then you can actually test drive the distribution in live mode before you commit to installing it, or if you're confident, you can go right into the installation process. But nothing that I've mentioned just now is new. For the most part, the installer has seen little change. But is the lack of change in the installer a bad thing? Perhaps not. Even though I would have liked to see additional features added, the installer is, well, something you should see only once, and it has only one goal anyway, which is to get Ubuntu installed on your device. And the installer does a very good job of that. It installs Ubuntu, and it does so fairly quickly. I just think at this point, I might consider not even mentioning the installation process at all going forward when I review future releases until they actually do update it. But overall, I'll consider the installer a win. It does the job that it was designed to do, and I guess we can't ask for more than that. Once Ubuntu 2204 is installed on your device, what new features might you encounter? The biggest change in this release is the inclusion of GNOME 42, so let's start there. GNOME itself has been the default desktop environment for Ubuntu since 1804 back in 2018. Each new version of GNOME brings new features, sometimes a lot of new features, and other times not as many, depending on the release. But at least with every GNOME release, there's something to look forward to. Since you can upgrade Ubuntu 2204 directly from 2004 as well as from 2110, the number of changes that you'll notice will depend on which version you might be upgrading from. Users of Ubuntu 2110 will notice the fewest differences, while those of you currently running 2004 will likely notice a much more updated experience. The horizontal workspaces will probably seem like the biggest change of all if you're coming from Ubuntu 2004, though this will be old news if you're coming from 2110. And personally, I actually like the new horizontal workspace switcher, but I'm not necessarily against vertical workspaces either. Other than the horizontal workspaces, I can't say that there's any killer new features here that are specific to GNOME 42 itself, but the desktop has seen regular updates with each new release, so when it all comes down to it, I think people will be generally pleased with the new desktop. Some of the improvements in GNOME 42 are invisible in Ubuntu 2204 because the customizations that were built into Ubuntu's implementations actually cover up some of GNOME's new features. For example, GNOME 42 features some theme improvements, but you won't notice that since Ubuntu 2204 features a custom theme of its own. One of the improvements in GNOME 42 itself that you will see in 2204 is the complete reworking of the screenshot tool, and it looks very slick in my opinion. In my test, the interface for taking screenshots with the new version of GNOME Screenshot was fairly obvious, and it didn't take any time at all for me to figure it out. Now, even though I don't think that GNOME Screenshot tool was in such bad shape that it needed to be remade, I still appreciate the new version nonetheless. My favorite feature this time around is that you can customize the accent color that's shown all over the desktop. I'm sure some of you won't see this as a big deal, but I've been wanting this new feature for quite a long time. 
Linux Mint has had this going on for quite a while now, and I've often wondered why some of the other desktop environments out there don't seem to care about this. I mean, even macOS gives people the ability to change their accent colors, so why can't GNOME? Anyway, the result here is that users will be able to change the accent color to whatever they like best, and that adds another layer of personalization that we didn't have before. At least, not in Ubuntu. And for me, I absolutely love this feature. Another reason why I think this is so great is that theming in GNOME has been a colossal nightmare for years now, with theming the GNOME desktop being extremely tedious and convoluted. To be fair, the ability to change accent colors doesn't constitute a complete custom theme, but it is more than we've had in GNOME for quite a while now. Now, the reason why I didn't mention this new feature alongside all the other features of GNOME 42 is because this isn't actually part of GNOME itself. The ability to change accent colors is actually a custom addition that's specific to Ubuntu 2204. And due to this, this means that if you were to use GNOME 42 on any other distribution, you might not have this feature unless your distro patches it in. In fact, this isn't the only way that Ubuntu's implementation differs from stock GNOME, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, speaking of themes, the default theme in Ubuntu has been reworked and refined. I think overall, the updated theme looks really good. It includes countless tweaks and refinements all over the place, and it's to the point where it would be hard for me to list every single change. I think the biggest change this time around when it comes to themes is that Canonical has made the light mode version of the theme the default again. For whatever reason, Ubuntu's default switches between the dark and light themes every now and then, and who knows, the next release could even switch back to the dark theme by default. Regardless, you could choose between the light and dark variants at any time since Ubuntu does a pretty good job of making it simple to change the default style, so I guess their inability to make up their minds between the light and dark variants doesn't really make a difference in the long run. Nitpicking default settings aside, I think the theme in the latest Ubuntu release is really good. It looks very modern and can actually hold its own when compared to the look and feel of proprietary operating systems, and I like it a lot actually. Another new feature this time around is that you can join your workstation to an Active Directory domain right from the installer. This isn't actually completely new. This feature was exposed in the Ubuntu installer back in Ubuntu 2104. But if you only use LTS releases, then, well, this feature will be brand new, at least to you. And when it comes to businesses out there that use Active Directory, I'll bet that this is a very welcome addition. Arguably, an even bigger change is the fact that Wayland is used by default instead of Xorg. To be fair, even this isn't completely new since it was actually 2104 that saw Ubuntu switch to Wayland. But if you're coming from 2004, then this is a new improvement, at least to you. To be fair, even this isn't completely new since this was made the default back in 2104. But if you're coming from 2004, then this will also be a new improvement, at least for you. But what is new, regardless of which version you come from, is that Wayland is used by default even if you have an NVIDIA GPU. In past releases, Xorg was still used on NVIDIA systems, but this time around, the new Ubuntu release is all Wayland by default. And I think that's pretty awesome. Wayland, at least to me, feels a lot smoother. And Wayland is also the future. And that's true even if it is taking 10 times longer than I thought it would for the Linux community to switch to it in general. But I'm really happy to see that Wayland is now the default. I'll bet that in the long run, it's really going to help its adoption. So far, it seems like Ubuntu 2204 is a really good release. And you know what? It actually is. I like it a lot. But like I mentioned in the intro, there's some curious design choices and also some inconsistencies that keep this release from perfection. And the biggest oddity, in my opinion, is that although Ubuntu is a GNOME distribution, its implementation in Ubuntu 2204 is more of a Franken-GNOME. Ubuntu 2204 sees the distro adopt the latest release of the GNOME desktop, which is, as of the time of this recording, version 42. And that sounds great until you realize that the GNOME implementation this time around is actually a hodgepodge of both new and outdated components, and that's because the developers decided to cherry-pick the updated components rather than giving you the complete package. Sure, the majority of the GNOME 42 desktop is here, but some components were not upgraded to their version 42 equivalent, and that's what led us to this implementation of GNOME that's more akin to a Frankenstein abomination of mismatched parts. For example, GNOME settings is stuck at version 41, as is GNOME Music, GNOME Calculator, and others. The reason why Franken GNOME is the case in Ubuntu 2204 is because the developers didn't feel that the updated components would receive enough testing by release time. 
So let me make sure that I'm actually understanding this properly. Interim releases actually exist for the sole purpose of testing bleeding edge software leading up to the next LTS release, but Ubuntu and their maintainers have decided to hold back GNOME 40, which means that we don't have enough time to test it. And because they held it back, not letting us test it, they're going to further hold some components back because we weren't able to test it, but it was their fault we weren't able to test it. What were they thinking? Now, to be fair, you might be able to form a valid argument that Canonical's concerns regarding GTK4 might actually have some validity. However, I feel that Frankenome does more harm than good. For an example of this, if someone was to use Ubuntu 2204 and then they later decide to try out something like Fedora, that person might be confused as to why some of the apps have different features between them, despite both distributions claiming to feature GNOME 42. This situation might lead new users to not fully understand what a true GNOME experience actually is, causing additional fragmentation and confusion within the community for no real reason. And unfortunately, the inconsistencies don't end there. One of the new features of GNOME 42 itself is that some new apps have actually debuted, specifically GNOME Console and the cleverly named GNOME Text Editor. These apps in particular replace GNOME Terminal and Gedit respectively. Given that Ubuntu claims to feature GNOME 42, you'd be forgiven if you were to assume that these new apps would be included as part of the default software selection. Instead, Ubuntu 2204 opts to stick to GNOME Terminal and Gedit. Thankfully, you can manually install these new apps, so technically you're not really losing anything here. But this is just yet another example of Ubuntu deviating away from GNOME and the entire implementation being a hodgepodge of inconsistent choices that's just going to add additional fragmentation and confusion, neither of which is beneficial to anyone. Now, that's not to say that Ubuntu's implementation of GNOME in 2204 is bad in and of itself. Actually, the desktop that's being presented to users is well-polished and stable. The theming updates make the distribution appear more modern than other GNOME-based distributions, and there's attention to detail at every turn. You can actually tell that Ubuntu's development team went to great effort to provide a good-looking and polished desktop experience. And the new ability to change the accent color represents a very welcome additional layer of personalization for the user. So that means that the implementation of GNOME in Ubuntu 2204 is actually really good with a lot of attention to detail, but at the same time, it's an inconsistent mess. But some of the custom changes here actually add value to the user, which is actually what gives me a very mixed opinion about this release. But at what point will the GNOME desktop, as implemented in Ubuntu, no longer be GNOME? It's almost like the Theseus paradox of open source. I mean, if you replace each component of GNOME one by one, at which point is it no longer GNOME? I'll let you guys debate that down in the comments. Anyway, the fact that we have an extremely customized implementation of GNOME can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on who you ask. Personally, I think the additional features and attention to detail in this GNOME implementation provide real value to the user, and a lot of people will be glad that Canonical went the extra mile with Ubuntu 2204. However, while the desktop experience in this release is solid and well done, it's also inconsistent like I mentioned earlier, which creates additional fragmentation, and that has me disappointed. Anyway, let's move on from GNOME because at this point, I have to address the elephant in the room, Snap Packages. This technology in particular has seen no shortage of debate in the community. Basically, more and more apps in Ubuntu are being migrated to Snap Packages instead of Dev Packages, and, well, not everyone is happy about that. With this new release, that trend continues as Firefox is the latest app to be converted into a Snap Package. You might be wondering, what exactly is a snap package? Snap packages are a form of universal package and make a lot of sense considering that a developer can ship one version of their app for Linux in the form of a snap package, and then every distro that supports snaps will each have access to that same piece of software. So despite the controversy, I think the idea behind snap packages is sound. Unfortunately, even though snap packages offer actual value to developers and users alike, the Linux community has been unfairly biased against the technology in general, with some not even giving it a full chance before dismissing it. However, some of the criticisms regarding snap packages are actually valid. For example, I find that apps distributed as snap packages generally take much longer to start up the first time, and I'm definitely not the only one that's noticed. In fact, people have been complaining about this problem for about as long as snap packages have existed, and it's absolutely baffling to me that Canonical hasn't bothered to fix this yet. 
So even though I feel that snap packages are a great technology and offer real value, there's just no excuse whatsoever in an LTS release to migrate something like Firefox to that format while real issues exist. So again, what were they thinking? Anyway, considering that there's some design choices that have me frustrated with this release, you might think that I'm going to recommend that you avoid Ubuntu 2204 altogether. But in reality, the complaints that I brought up won't be a big deal to everybody. If you find a way to work around the slow to launch issue with Firefox, and you also don't mind using Franken GNOME rather than the true GNOME experience, then what we're left with here is actually a very solid release. Overall, my opinion of Ubuntu 2204 is very mixed, and it might very well be the most mixed opinion I've ever had while reviewing a release of Ubuntu during the entire history of this channel. On one hand, the desktop experience is really good. It's fast, it's stable, there's a lot of new features here, the theme has been refined and looks great, but on the other hand, we have Franken GNOME, Firefox takes a very long time to start, there's some real issues and inconsistencies with this release, and that's especially interesting considering that this is an LTS release, which means that the focus should be on stability and consistency, but in actuality, we end up with a release that isn't all that different from an interim release. Anyway, what's your opinion of Ubuntu 2204? Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about this new release or this review. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe because I have some awesome content coming as usual, and I'll see you in the next video.